Thanks for joining me today. I'm going to talk about cookbooks. My favorite cookbooks uh, that are Italian cookbooks and that highlight the flavors of certain cities. So we're gonna get started, but if you like what you see today, make sure you give me a thumbs up and uh, leave me some comments. Let me know what you're thinking. Let me know if you um, think I'm leaving out some cookbooks um, about great Italian cooking. And let me know, um, uh, or let's subscribe. That's the last cool thing that I, I would ask you to do. So let's get started. So the first two cookbooks are like beast cookbooks in my mind. Um, the first cookbook is The Silver Spoon. And I, these two cookbooks I'm mentioning because I think they're kind of like canon in Italian cooking. This is a traditional, like, this is kind of like the joy of cooking for in, in America. This is a book that's often given to, um, for weddings, that kind of thing. But it's basically all the basics, um, how to make potato gnocchi, how to make walnut gnocchi, how to make like all these different regional dishes. This is sartu. Um, and uh, this is a timbale. There's everything for like eggs with eggplant, cardoon crepes. It's, it, there's, there's like thousands of recipes in here, literally thousands of recipes. Um, and lots and lots of pictures. You can see here lots of cooked lettuce, which is really like my nightmare food. Any cooked leafy green just kind of just doesn't do it for me. Um, lots and lots of, um, you, there's different sections for different types of food. Um, so silver spoon is kind of like, the, the basics of all the Italian cooking. The next big book that I would say is interesting too is La Cucina, which is the regional cooking of Italy. And this is um, from the Accademia Italiana della Cucina, the Italian Academy of, C of Cuisine. And this is a lot, um, there's thousands of recipes in this as well, um, but it's um, more about regional cooking. And so you can see that um, with each recipe, like fried eggs and sauces from the Piemonte. And then um, you can, you know, all of them have a little bit of a, a story here. So fettuccine with white um, fava beans from Puglia. And it'll give you a little bit of um, a flavor of the dish. And it tells you what the name of the dish is in Italian as well. And so like, and it'll tell you like a little um, bit about the dish. So in this case, Loane are Italiatelli made only using only water and flour. This is a typical peasant dish since the fava beans cost little but are rich in protein. And so it gives you some, um, some information about the regional dishes themselves. Um, there's no pictures, but there's some really delicious recipes. So like I've got some your marks in here, Italiatelli with meat sauce, which is pretty basic, but, um, Rabbit with fennel. What else do I have? I think I have a whole bunch of a potato timbale. That sounds pretty awesome to me. Um, I know I've got some some uh, anise fritters with honey. Like I've got some good recipes earmarked. And this is a huge book, but a lot of fun. La Cucina. Eating Rome by Elizabeth Mincilli. And she is a blogger a cookbook author, um, a food expert. Um, she has um, basically been somebody I've been following for a long time, like yeah, probably, a, probably at least eight, nine, 10 plus years. I don't know how long she's been blogging, but I feel like it's been forever. Oh, Mr. Merle's back again, except I get backside for Mr. Merle. <sighs> um, okay. Uh, her book is absolutely gorgeous. Um, she, but this, what I love about this book is that she's literally eating all the way ar around Rome. And so she's giving you um, really beautiful photos of the different restaurants. She's giving you um, um, like, oh, here's the, the Jewish artichokes, which are so good. Um, we've tried to make them at home and it's just not the same. Uh, everything about um, all of the dishes that are regional to Rome and the different restaurants. Um, there's a recipes for artichoke lasagna. She um, talks about like my favorite, my husband's favorite food, which is puntarelle, which is a type of chicory, which is pretty much not able to be found in the U S and don't tell me it's the same chicory that's here. Cause it's definitely not. It's totally different for reparation. If you see chicory on a restaurant menu here, it's not the same as Rome. And if it is, I want you to tell me because we need to figure out how to go there to satisfy my husband's um, desperation for punt punto Um, 
And she goes um, pretty much like, you know, how you um, eat pasta in Rome. And she just, there's just so many really awesome recipes. And this actually is, um, uh, looks like a gnocchi, um, cacio e pepe with arugula, um, which is really interesting. And she, she's, it's a very, she talks, you know, very personally too about like how she lives and her thinking about food. And I just really love this book because it's like a, a real good guide to uh, Rome itself, as well as the restaurants and, um, and definitely check out her blog too, because she's full of really great information. Love this book. Okay. Emiko Davies, The Florentine. I really think this is such a gorgeous book. Um, I love books that have so many pictures in it. And so she has all of this really interesting um, information, books that like, I love cookbooks you can read. So she talks about um, this, the different you know, areas in Florence, um, the different kinds of foods that you can eat, um, all of the, um, uh, the way that um, Florentine cuisine breaks down. So she has the schiacciata, the Tuscan focaccia, which is unsalted. Um, actually, here's the salted. So um, maybe that's not the one I'm thinking of. Um, oh, here's the Tuscan bread. The, um, the one that she talks about Tuscan bread and how um, it doesn't, there's an unsalted version, unsalted bread that is very typical Florentine. And um, you guys can definitely correct me on which one it is. I'm sure it's in here somewhere, actually. But she's just got gorgeous photos. There's really wonderful um, um, recipes in here. I mean, the whole cookbook, I just want to make all of the food in it. Schiacciata all'uva, grapes. Um, oh my gosh, I seriously just want to make all the things in it. This is chen, um, chenchi, I guess that's how you would say it. Um, de sweet deep fried pastry, um, carcio figuriti, um, just really beautiful photos. The food looks absolutely fantastic. The Florentine by Emiko Davies, um, everything about Florence. And look, like it's like the edges of the book are orange. Like it's all beautiful. Oh, this is one of my favorite cookbooks of all. This is Venice um, and Food by Sally Spector. I think when I got it, it was hard to find. Like there weren't, I think it, it could be out of print. So if you can find copies, you should snag it. Um, I wanted it because I was really struggling finding information about Venetian food and um, just went before I was going there and then after when I was there and from some of the research I'm doing. And what I love about this book is that it's all like, it's all painted by Sally Spector and illustrated by her. And there's stories about all the food and stories about um, just different parts of Venice. I mean, the whole book is absolutely just beautifully rendered and she talks about you know the, like the utensils that they make the food with and um, there's lots of recipes in here but what I love is that she's just describing what is important in Venetian cuisine like here's a whole section on butter um, yeah and I mean yeah you just you just this book is just gorgeous you should just get it um, and the, and it's fascinating it's actually there's not so many yeah there's recipes in here Sopa di tripe, tripe soup. Um, but um, what I love most about it is that there's stories about the Venetian cuisine and um, it's just, it's a gorgeous book. You should get it if you can find it. Flour plus water. Um, this is Thomas McNaughton. You might be familiar with him. He has a restaurant in San Francisco. It's called Flour Plus Water. Uh, we were in Bologna and we went to an Italian pasta factory and this is where, um, Thomas McNaughton hung out and actually, um, and so we watched the, the women make pasta and he has, I think he, he has pictures in here of them making pasta here, here. Isn't that incredible? And we watched them roll the pasta and cut the pasta and make it and, um, got to make some pasta ourselves. You can, it's, it was a food tour that we did. And this is where he learned to make pasta. And we use his, um, his pasta recipe because it's the same pasta recipe as these wonderful um, ladies. But then like he just, he learned how to make pasta there. And the, the, the food looks incredible in the cookbook. The food sounds incredible. 
I have yet to go to San Francisco to be at his restaurant, but I really wish I could um, because I just know that I would be totally in love with the food. So flour plus water, um, pasta by Thomas McNaughton. Um, this book is all Bologna, um, and that kind of follows on the heels of the Thomas McNaughton. He learned a lot of what he wanted to in about pasta in Bologna. Um, this is actually Memories from the Kitchen of Italy. I found it really hard to find um, rest, um, cookbooks from Bologna, the Bolognese cuisine. Oh, hi, Merle, Mr. Merlin. Merlin came to grace us with his presence, I guess. I didn't even notice. He's just always kind of ubiquitously in the background when I'm filming. And Nero is just off sleeping right now. He could care less about us. He's, he's less vain than Merlin. Um, but um, Bologna Mia um, by Loretta Paz Pazzanini. And I, like I was saying, I found it really difficult to find great cookbooks set in Bologna. It was just something that I found hard to do, and I, which is baffling to me because it is like the land of food. It is called um, um, Il Grosso because it's the, the fat because of the food. It's just, it, in fact, I actually had a really hard time for the first few days acclimatizing to the richness of the food. It is, it is heavenly but very um heavy and it's so delicious absolutely incredible and i just think it's crazy that i couldn't find any cookbooks at least um not that many that were all about bologna and this particular cookbook is i wouldn't say that um you know it's not necessarily beautiful inside it's simply simple and utilitarian but there's a lot of really wonderful um um, recipes that are you know right out of Bologna so like a tortellini alla gorgonzola fat cheese tortellini um, tortelloni. tortelloni is like big tortellini and that was something I loved so much when I was in Bologna and I do not know I keep shaking the, the table here I apologize I do not know why American chefs have not figured out tortelloni we are the land of the big food right why on earth do you not so why don't chefs make tortelloni? It's like amazing. So that's my, my, my wish. Make some tortelloni for me. Crescente bolognese focaccia, um, gnocchi di patate. Oh, she's got a recipe for um, zuppa inglese. And zuppa inglese is an English trifle. And we do not know why it's called zuppa inglese. They, there seems to be no actual connection. Um, the, it's a trifle, so it's a layered, um, creamy, like it's cream and, and liquid and um, cake. And um, it's usually used with alkermes, um, which is a red liqueur, like crazy red. And it's made from um, co the coquineal um shells from the beetles actually the color is from beetles which sounds crazy but um and it's a really sweet sweet liqueur and it's i don't think you can find it easily in the united states we've looked for it um you can use slow gin which is what she uses here in the recipe because she's publishing this in the u.s um and um I thought it was interesting that she did a swap. And I think that's probably true of a lot of these Italian cookbooks is that they probably have substitutions for certain things that are hard to acquire here in the U.S. Um, wedding cookies, a crescentine, which is fried dough. And crescentine is um, really, um, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a, Crescentine was something that we saw all over um, Emilio Romagna. And um, it's a thin, uh, almost kind of like croissant like um, bread, um, almost like a pita, but it, but not kind of. It's really hard to explain. But they had they in um, when we were in Urbino, they made sandwiches out of it, and it was delicious. And it's very definitely rem reminiscent of certain Renaissance recipes that are in the Scopi cookbook. Um, Bartolomeo Scopi, who is the subject of my novel, The Chef's Secret. Katie Parla, she is one of my favorite Italian food bloggers. Um, I've had the opportunity, um, I, I did a reading with her in uh, Rome last fall, which was wonderful and exciting. And um, I have been following her blog for over a decade. I have taken her word for restaurants as gold, and you should too. Um, this cookbook is full of really wonderful Roman um, uh, like classics. Um, she worked tirelessly to try to um, really showcase 
the best of Roman cuisine and worked with all of these different restaurants and um, different um, uh, uh, food um, uh, restaurateurs and um, people that work in the markets to get their recipes. So Caccio e Pepe di Leonardo Vignoli, and um, who is um, at Cesare al Casaletto. And uh, look at that. Doesn't that look delicious? Um, what do you think, Merlin? No? Not delicious? He just wants to be worshipped, right? Um, there's also... Um, Bonchale, like just the, the, there's just some delicious, delicious um, recipes in here. In Voltini di Manzo. Um, I'm trying not to hide Merlin because like he gets so offended when he's like being covered up, right? Um, it's a just porchetto. I just want to make all the recipes and I've made so many of them in here. Um, some of my favorites are the, the gnocchi di patate di Arcangelo. Um, uh, um, and Arcangelo Dandini. L'Arcangelo is actually one of my favorite restaurants in Rome. And it's um, over the river from Castel, behind Castel um, Sant'Angelo a bit. Um, and delicious, delicious food if you can get to L'Arcangelo. Bruschetti con carciofi, limone e pecorino romano is also one of my other favorite recipes. Um, and so Tasting Rome by Katie Parla. She has a new cookbook coming out, I think later on this year. And uh, I imagine it's going to be just as delicious. This is definitely one of my favorite cookbooks. Um, so you should snag it. Eleonoro, uh, Eleonora Galasso. And this is As the Romans Do. And what I love about this book is really all the visuals. This is probably one of the most beautiful um, cookbooks um, as far as photography is concerned. I love this dish. Thursday ricotta gnocchi with shrimp and pistachios. We've made this a couple of times. Um, and there's, it's just a, a really gorgeously done cookbook. And there's lots of different um, recipes in here, um, but they're all based uh, in Rome. And so, um, yeah, fritter trio of Roman style rice balls, potato croquettes and mini meatloaves. As the Romans do, um, La Dolce Vita in a cookbook. So and there's two more cookbooks and then I'm, then I'm good here. So Essentials of Ita Classic Italian Cooking. This is a kind of a Bible, I would say. If you want to have like one really great cookbook that is um, a better than the Silver Spoon and has really just classic Roman, not to Roman, but Italian dishes, um, Marcella, Marcella Hazen, um, I'm assuming she goes by Marcella. It might be Marcella if she's in the States. Um, but it's really simple, just great food. Um, it just, abs so this was published probably, this was, came out like 25, 30 years ago, maybe. And, um, really this is one of the first big cookbooks about Italian food that came out in the United States. And, um, this has just all these really great classic dishes in it. Tortellini with meat and cheese filling, um, risotto with celery, making polenta, um, squid with tomatoes and peas, Tuscan style, um, whole sections on veal. Um, I will probably not make the fried calf's brains, but maybe you will if you like sweetbreads. But if you really want, this is, I guess this is like the better joy of cooking, but for Italian food. Um, and uh, this is probably one of our go-to cookbooks. We've made more recipes out of this cookbook probably than any of the others. Although this cookbook is giving it a run for the money. And this is new that we've just picked up. It's um, Osterie. Um, it's a slow food cookbook. There's a thousand recipes from Italy's best restaurants. Um, it is edited by... Um, Natalie Danford, who's a food writer and an Italian translator. And so, and I don't envy her job editing it. Well, maybe I do because I hope she got to eat some of the food. Um, but basically what they did is they um, asked restaurants all over Italy to submit their, their best dishes, the dishes that their diners call for again and again. And so there's recipes from all over Italy in it. Right, Merle? Merle just does not care. Um, he's not an Italian food fan, are you? No, 
Okay. Carciofi alla Romana, there's Fratelli di Zucca, but it tells you the restaurants that they're from and the region that they're from. So Fiori di Zucca Fritti from um, uh, Francesco Ronco, Francesco Ronco in Ducino San Michele, which is in the Asti in Piemonte. Um, there's uh, grilled porcini mushrooms from Osteria Bagnoli. See, I'm still learning. Um, Castagnetto Carducci in Livorno, um, Toscana. Um, garlic octopus. Um, there's bean, wild greens, and herbs and cabbage soup. Freshwater fish soup. Um, fettuccine with chicken livers. Like this is rapidly becoming our one of our go-to books for all things Italian. So, uh, by Merol. See, I told you, I wasn't an Italian food fan. So again, this one, last one, Asterie, Asteria, I should say. I don't know why it's only one because there's many in here. Um, a thousand generous and simple recipes from Italian's best local restaurants. Absolutely delicious dishes in here. If you only bought one cookbook, this could make you super happy. Um, but I hope you enjoyed all of the recommendations that I might have. These are some of my favorite cookbooks. We've cooked from every single one of them. Um, wonderful dishes in all of them. Definitely run out, grab yourself a couple, make some dishes. Tell me what you think. Leave me a note in the comments. And if you like this video, give it a like and um, subscribe. Find um, more book recommendations, cookbook recommendations. I'll talk about writing. I'll talk about Italy. I've got lots of stuff to talk about on Italy, that's for sure. Um, and uh, books in general. So Give me a subscribe and I will see you soon. Ciao.